Hello there. I am Pat Willie, the founder and CEO of the ministry, The Gathering, when women gather, when women worship. Thanks for listening in tonight. Thanks for subscribing to my channel. I pray that the word of God will bless you. It will be straight for you and that it will transform your life. All right, let's get started in the word of God. Again, thanks for joining me. Okay, this is Pat Willie, and this is The Gathering, and I'm here in Dallas, Texas. And again, this is The Gathering, when women gather, when women worship. And we are a group of ladies that do an online Bible study as well as a prayer. Uh, We are called to influence, inspire, and equip women to form authentic relationships with God and others, to experience true freedom and deliverance in our lives, to tell their story, and to impact the world. Again, thank you guys for being on tonight. We're going to continue our lesson on the campaign of peace, the peace campaign. I enjoyed the lesson last week. I went back and listened to it myself and got shared some very powerful nuggets with us on last week regarding peace. And so thank you guys for being back on tonight. We are women who believe in living godly, fulfilled lives, and not just surviving, but thriving in our life, living fulfilled lives. So again, we started the peace campaign on last week. We're going to continue that lesson series, or this lesson series, throughout the month of October. If you have missed any of the lessons, you can certainly go back to my YouTube channel. It's Pat Willie Ministry and listen to those lessons as well as if you need prayer for anything, go to any podcast platform and that, and there you'll find two minute prayers where I am just praying different subject matters and that are relevant to what's going on in today's world into our lives. So if you need prayer for anything, go and listen to those prayer podcasts. Thank you guys again for being on tonight. I really appreciate you and your dedication and your participation in this meeting. You make this meeting possible. I can't do it without you. It's impossible. So I really appreciate you taking time out of your Thursday evening. And many of you are just getting in from work and that I know is a lot of us on different time zones and that I know as well. So I want to make good use of the time and make sure we expedite the lesson, be led by the Holy Spirit, and then uh, we cover the lesson and then we go into prayer. So again, thank you for being on tonight. Again, we're going to continue in our series, The Peace Campaign. And before we get started tonight, I'd just like to say a word of prayer and then we're going to get started in the lesson. Father God, in the name of Jesus, we honor you. We give you praise and glory. We thank you for your presence that's in our lives. We thank you for this day. We thank you, God, that tonight we want to hear your truth. And as a result of hearing your truth, we want to be better people. We ask you, Holy Spirit, to speak to our hearts and our minds to give us understanding that we may live according to your word. We give you glory. We give you praise for every woman that's listening tonight. I pray your peace in their homes. In Jesus' name, amen. Again, thank you guys for being on. For those of you that are joining us a little later, this is Pat Willie, and this is The Gathering, and we are going to begin our studies tonight with a continuation of the topic, the peace campaign, the peace campaign. Now, last week, we defined peace as the blessed tranquility and rest of God that is not contingent on the natural circumstances. It is the blessed tranquility and rest of God that operates outside of the natural sphere. And that's what we uh, define peace as. And because peace is spiritual, it is a fruit of the spirit, and it has its origin in God only. The peace represents 
all that God is, and it grows and increases in a spiritual environment. So we defined peace last week. We also defined campaign as an organized course of action to uh, achieve a goal. So if you're going to have a campaign, then you have to have an organized course of action, and then you have to have a goal in mind. So in the study of peace or the peace campaign, our goal is that we build actions towards achieving a greater level of peace in our lives. We feel biblical actions uh, toward achieving a higher level of peace in our lives. And so we talked about last week, we do that through four concepts. And it starts with knowing that peace is God. God is the source of peace. There are blessings uh, of God that are made available through peace. Blessings are made available to God through peace. We have access to peace. We have access to the peace because we have access to God. And then the last concept that we talked about, number four, make room for peace. That we have to actively participate and engage in peaceful activity. We have to make room for peace in our life. And tonight, we're going to continue our study. So, last week, we talked about the peace using a creation ecology, using a creation ecology. And, and don't get hung up on that word. Ecology is just a fancy word of saying how do things relate and how are things are interrelated and what's the connectivity between things. And so, we use that as a backdrop to our discussion we went to Genesis because if you want to know about creation, then you go to the book of Genesis. It's the first book in the Bible. It talks about where God created the heaven and the earth. Well, we talked about that God created everything according to his divine order. And everything that was dark, that was void and without form was addressed in creation. And so many times, a, a lack of peace represent those things that are void in our life, those things that are out of order in our life. And then if there's sin in our life, it certainly represents the darkness that can be a part of our life. But God wants to come in and he wants to give us peace and he wants to set some order in our lives through the creation of peace. So we did not read the word peace in the Old Testament, because I taught you the concept of first mention, and I taught you the concept of what it means to look for the things that describe the word, and more so than the word itself. And we always go to Genesis, because it is the beginning of all things, and it's the beginning of all things according to the word of God. And so we look at God creating a peaceful environment. God creating a peaceful environment. And in that environment, growth and multiplication were possible. God creating a peaceful environment, using our garden, using grass, trees, herbs, feet, creating a peaceful environment and ensuring that everything that was needed for growth and multiplication was there. So we talked about the peace as a fruit of the spirit. And we talked about that in, according to Galatians 5 and 19, that peace is there through the spirit of God. It is not an emotion. It, it is a fruit of the spirit. And peace does not mean that we don't experience emotion. Does not mean that we don't have trouble. But what peace does, it ensures that even when there are troubles in our lives, even when we're going through circumstances in our lives, because we have God on the inside, we can experience his peace and we can experience human emotions and yet maintain a peace with God. 
because why peace is a spiritual fruit and not a natural human emotion. Well, our aim in the series is that the fruit of the peace will grow and multiply as we learn more about the Word of God. Again, our aim in this series is that the fruit of peace will grow and multiply as we learn more about the Word of God. Tonight, we're going back to the book of Genesis, and we're going to look at another passage of Scripture. And again, remember what we learned from last night. We will not hear the word peace, but we are going to look for the concept of the peace as God creates a peaceful environment. So the scripture is Genesis chapter 2, verses 4 through 8. Genesis chapter 2, verses 4 through 8. The second passage of scripture is going to be Psalm chapter 1, or the first Psalm. Psalm 1. And then lastly, we're going to look at John 7 and 38. John 7 and 38. If you're taking notes, you could write those down. But if you want to go back and listen to the YouTube broadcast, those things will be there. So, listen for the concept of peace as we continue from the standpoint of God supplying what is needed in order to establish peace and order in nature. Genesis 2, 4 through 8. And these are the generations of the heavens and the earth when they were created in the day that the Lord God made the earth and the heavens. And every plant of the field before it was in the earth. And every herb in the field before it grew. And the Lord God had not called it to rain upon the earth. And there was no man to till the ground. But there went up a mist from the earth and watered the whole face of the ground. And the Lord God formed man out of the dust of the ground and breathed into his nostrils the breath of life. And man became a living soul. So listen for that it's a piece here as God creates this environment as he creates this environment he's setting order and he's creating this environment and so we say when we've heard that the plants are there the field is there but there's two things that are missing the scripture says there's no water it has not rained and so we know the necessity of water and rain when you plant a garden. And the second thing is, there is not a man to till the soil. So if you have a garden, you're going to have to plant a seed. The seed is already present, but there is no water and there is no man. So we look at that in a combined form to say that God is creating an environment and everything that was lacking from the environment, God is going to supply. Now, remember that because that's the essence of peace. Everything that was lacking in the environment, God supplied. So again, the water source is missing, and a man needed to be created to till the soil. So in verse 6, God is addressing the missing parts that constitute a peaceful environment and putting, that will produce and multiply water and a man. So the first thing we know is, he said, so because it hasn't rained, there was a water that went from up from the earth, and it became the water source to water the plants and the sea that God had already created. So there was a need for water. The initial watering of what God had created came up from the earth. Now that's important. Up from the earth, meaning that the water source it was in the earth, and it watered that which was on top of the soil. Now here we get a picture of peace because we said peace was a spiritual principle, and when you have peace and you have the spirit of God 
And if you're born again, believer, you do have the Spirit of God on the inside of you. So peace, the water source, the peace comes up and out of you from your innermost being. It's not the emotion that from the surface of your life. Oh, thank you, Holy Ghost. But the peace that he's talking about comes out of the most inner core of your being. In, in fact, it, it's a spirit of God that produces peace from our soul. And it said, and it watered it. The Holy Spirit is a source of peace all in our life that's on the inside of us. And, and, and I liken that to Psalm chapter 1. He says, if a man, a white man, I'm going to paraphrase it, but you're going to read it next week as you're reading a sign next. He says, when a wise man refuses ungodly counsel, when a wise man separates himself from those that are ungodly, he is like a tree that is planted by the rivers of water that bring forth fruit in its season. So what does he say? When you connect yourself to the water source of God, you can expect that fruit will be produced in your life through the Holy Ghost. Why? Because you're connected to the water source. Now, what is the water source? The water source becomes, yeah, the scripture, the word of God, and the river of water, and the spirit of God flowing through you, connecting with the word of God, which is the seed of God, is water, that it may produce what God has planted in your life, which is fruit. And so, fruit is peace. When we connect with God, his word, and other people, then we will grow. God is about connecting. God is about relationships. God is about us connecting with one another. In isolation, there is no growth. We have to connect with God. We have to connect with his word. We have to connect with people of like faith in order that we grow and we experience the fruit of God and we experience the blessings of God that he has for all of us. In the New Testament, uh, they were, there was a discussion about, this is 1 Corinthians, I think it's 3, 6 through 9. This is Paul addressing some believers in Corinth. And they were discussing, listen to this, about what church they belong to. You know, many times that, uh, just like the discussion that we're having nowadays that we see that it's going on. And so it wasn't a church, but it was whose ministry or who, what disciple are you following or whose sect, S-E-C-T, are you on? And, he, and Paul answered it, says, some say they are Paul, some say they are Paul. But listen what Paul said. He said, it is Paul that waters, it is Apollo, Apollo that planted, it is Apollo that waters, but it's God that gives the increase. So what is he saying? It, it's a good thing to be connected with people like-minded and people of like faith, but it is God that gives the increase. It is God that bears on for us the fruit of the Spirit in your life, that after you have heard the Word of God, after you have connected with people of like faith, God will give you the spirit in order that you may experience multiplication, growth, and be influenced by people of like faith. Let's stop there and talk about what it means to be connected to God. And as I said before, no growth takes place in isolation. There is no growth in isolation. There is no peace in isolation. And, and many of you said, uh, here the, the uh, old cliche, I, I don't mind, <laughs> is the devil's workshop. I'm going to add to that. Isolation is his tomb shed. Well, if you're in isolation and you or avoid a meaningful relationship, you will never experience the peace that comes from God because you got to be connected with him and you got to be connected with others in order that 
grow happen. And, and our relationship with God is not about a physical building. It's not about brick and mortar. It's about our relationship with him and how we connect one to the other. So the question becomes, how do I increase or how I experience a greater level of peace? Well, the answer is in the word of God. And all of our answers are in the word of God. And that's what it says. The answer is grace and peace be multiplied through the knowledge of Jesus Christ. And if I want to, in essence, in paraphrasing what he's saying, that if you want to increase a grace in your life and you want to increase a peace in your life, it comes through the knowledge of Jesus Christ and the word of God, because the word of God is the seed. And when the seed is planted into the right environment and the right kind of soil, God will call someone to come and water it. And then the Holy Ghost will give the increase. What are you talking about? The increase, an increase of understanding, an increase in peace, an increase in knowledge of the world, an increase of how to live in harmony and fellowship with others. That's what I'm talking about. So, there was no water the next thing. There was no man to till the ground. Two things were missing. No water. No water came up and out of the ground because there was no rain. And next thing, out of that same ground, God forms a man. And so he gives, he breathes into man the breath of life. Man becomes a living soul. And then he gives the man the assignment to till the ground. The God of creation is the God of peace and peaceable habitations and domains. Do you hear me what I said? The God of creation is the God of peace and peaceful habitations and domains. Okay? Providing everything that's needed. And whatever is needed, uh-huh, God is able to provide it. Whatever is needed or like, God is our source. So when we continue to read the scripture, and I can't read it all to you tonight, we talk about God makes a garden and he put Adam in the garden. And in that garden is everything that Adam needs. There is a river that flows, that divides in four directions. There's wealth, there's section jewels, there's self. So God created this environment called the Garden of Eden that has perfect peace and tranquility. Garden is connected by river to other nations. Listen, then I tell you the connectivity and the connections and how we relate to others. And so God sees that Adam has a need before Adam ever expresses his need. So God says, uh, Adam needs some things. So well, I'm going to make Adam a help me. So God makes all of them, the animals, bring them to Adam. And say, name the animals. Adam named all of the animals. Okay? But that did not produce a total peace for Adam. But the scripture said, and then God said, I'm going to make a suitable. Oh, there's peace there. Listen for peace. I'm going to make a suitable help me for Adam. And it's for his peace. And it's for his completeness that is needed. And God is addressing it. So without Adam ever having to ask God, God creates the woman, the God of peace, the God of harmony and tranquility, create what Adam needs. And this is what was described in the New Testament. And the scripture says, God knows what we need before we ever ask him. God knows what we need before we ever ask him. Now, he wants us that, but within the peace framework, God already knows what we need. And just as he knew what the first man he may need, he also knows what we need. Uh-huh. And that should bring us a peace in knowing that God knows my need before I ever ask him. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. Because why? He hasn't created this peacefulness environment where I have harmony and fellowship with him. And because I call him I'm my father, or I call him Lord, it establishes a relationship and a connection 
with him, glory be to God. And when that happens, a peaceful environment comes into play. We ask God for a framework of peace. That's got to give you a mindset of a framework of peace. Now, the Holy Spirit dropped that in my spirit, a framework of peace. That's for how we need to live our lives as believers. From a framework of peace, the peace is created or a framework of peace is created when there's an agreement between the terms of the party that what makes for peace. There is an agreement between both parties about what makes for peace. And so we have to look at peace from a framework of peace. Will you agree that within the framework of peace today, thank you, Lord, when we think about who God is and what God represents, then it comes from a framework of peace that God knows my needs before I ever ask him. And that's the peace of God, ruling in your heart, knowing that God knows everything that I need and he will give me peace in my current situations. In my current circumstances. For I say unto you, why I tell my words to you guys are whatsoever thing you desire. Mark 11 and 24. When you pray, believe that the God of peace wants you to have because he knows what you need before you ever ask. And then he wants us to ask because he says, ask and it shall be given. Seek and he shall find. Knock in the door. He wants us to ask. But God relies in the framework of peace on knowing that what we need before we ever need it. And he says, believe when you ask whatsoever things you desire. Mark 11, 24. When you pray, believe that you have received them and you shall have them. Oh my God. And that's what the peace God wants to have in prayer. That when we pray, believe that you have received them. And when you believe that you will receive it because you're asking the God of peace, the God of harmony, the God of, yes, the God of fellowship, who you are in relationship with, who you are connected to, you're asking that God. And then you shall have it. And that gives me peace. What a comfort it is in knowing that we serve a God that knows what we need before we give up that instruction. From Jesus on how to pray is that our Father, which art in heaven, relationship and connectivity, our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Your kingdom come, which is a kingdom of complete tranquility and peace. Your kingdom come in the earth as it is in heaven. Some of you call this the law of prayer, lives over in Matthew chapter 6. Yeah. So Jesus is teaching us to pray from the standpoint of peace. I'm in a relationship with you, God. You're my father. I'm connected to you. I connect to the kingdom of God, which is established in peace and harmony. And I ask you that your will will be done in my life as it's done in the heaven. And heaven is full peace and tranquility. And then God will bring us. But for us to ask in prayer, he tells us to ask. We ask from the standpoint of peace that in God, in God, all of our needs are met. And that's what the scripture says. And my God shall supply all of our needs according to his riches and glory. Because why? He already knows what we need. Glory be to God. And in reality, we ask God that's able and willing and ready to bless us and to give us a peace. So we find peace in the sovereignty of God, that he knows all, sees all, he's in control of all. And that gives us tremendous peace tonight. That no matter what we're going through, my knowledge of him tells me that he will not put any more on me that I can bear, that he's faithful, and in every trial and tribulation that I'm faced with today, I will be able to come out of it because of my relationship with him. Because he remembers, oh, thank you, Holy Ghost. And Psalm said, he remembers my frame and he knows 
Like nothing but dirt. Glory be to God. So God knows how much dirt can withstand. Thank you, Lord. And that should bring us peace. But in every temptation, there is a way of escape because God is faithful. And he will never put on us more than we can bear that we may be able to withstand the trials and tribulation of our life because of the peace of God. Next week, we're going to talk about making room for peace. Peace, many times, is intentional. You got to make room for it. And the wisdom of God is going to teach us how to make room for peace in our lives. That concludes our lesson for tonight. Let's pray. Father God, in the name of Jesus, we honor your name. We give you glory. We give you praise. We feel your peace. We feel you abiding in our hearts and our minds and our souls. We are connected with you. We are your daughter. And because of that, you know what we need before we ever ask. And oh, what peace, Lord, our soul, but our mind, that we have a father that knows what we need. Not only do you know what we need, but your word says, you will supply every one of our needs. And God, just as you establish peace and tranquility in creation, we pray that you would establish that same peace in our hearts and our minds tonight, that we will learn to trust you, need not to our own understanding. In all our ways, we will acknowledge you, and your word says you will direct path. Thank you for the peace in knowing you tonight. And then God, we thank you because we don't do life in isolation. We are related to one another. We are connected to one another. Your word says, iron, sharp as iron. We thank you for the group that's on tonight, for the encouragement, for the unity, for the fellowship that we feel, even though thousands of miles separate some of us. The Holy Spirit bridges the gap of distance, and we feel your peace and your unity tonight. And for that, we give you glory and we give you praise. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. And amen. Hello there. This is Pat Willie again. Thanks for listening in to this week's Bible's lesson. I know you were blessed by the word as I was. Join us again next week as we gather to learn more about the Word of God. Blessings now. Have a blessed week. In Jesus' name, amen.